In this video, we're going to complete example two, and we're going to learn how to rationalize the denominator for each question below. Now on this slide, you can only see questions A and B. On the next slide, we're also going to go over questions C and D. In the previous video, we completed example one, and we also learned how to rationalize the denominator. Example two is going to be much harder because this time our denominator has two terms, as opposed to one. So let's look at question A. We're going to focus on the denominator here and think to ourselves, what can we multiply this by in order to rationalize the denominator? Remembering that when we multiply, we're multiplying the whole expression, which means that technically it's in brackets. We're going to be multiplying this expression by something that is almost exactly the same. We're going to have an expression which also has a 5 as well as a root 2, but instead of a minus, we're going to have a plus. Now, some of you might have noticed that this is the difference of two squares. The difference of two squares involves two sets of brackets which have the same two terms, except that one has a minus and one has a plus. And when you expand this, you're actually going to get a nice whole number, which means that we're going to rationalize the denominator. Now, whenever you multiply the denominator by something, you have to multiply the numerator by the same thing. We need to multiply the numerator by five plus root two as well. So what are we going to get? Well, we'll start with the numerator. One times five plus root two is just 5 plus root 2. What about our denominator? Well, we're going to use the shortcut. For the difference of two squares, we simply look at the two terms. So we have 5 and root 2. It's the same two terms for each set of brackets, 5 and root 2. And we're going to square each term. So we're going to square the 5 and we're going to square the root 2. So 5 squared is 5 times 5 or 25. And then if we take the square root of 2, then square it, we're actually going to get the whole number 2. Because when you square root something, then square it, you go back to the original number. So we got the two numbers, 25 when we squared the 5, and 2 when we squared the square root of 2. And then you put the minus sign between them. So to reiterate what we did, we had the difference of two squares, so we simply squared our two terms, which gave us 25 and 2. And then to finish off, as we always do with the difference of two squares, we subtract the two terms. Now we're going to get a nice whole number for our denominator. 25 minus 2 is 23. So we get 5 plus the square root of 2 over 23. Now we are also told to simplify our expressions, but for question A, there is no way that we can simplify this. So we'll now move on to question B. Looking at our denominator, we need to multiply it by the same two terms, two root seven and one. Our first expression had a minus sign, so our second one needs to have a plus sign. The numerator also needs to be multiplied by the same thing, two root seven, plus 1. So what do we get when we multiply 3 by 2 root 7 plus 1? Well, we need to expand our brackets. 3 times 2 root 7, 3 times 2 is 6, and then we put our root 7 next to that. 3 times 1 is 3, so we have plus 3. All right, let's focus on our denominator now. Our two terms are 2 root 7 and 1. It's the same two terms for each set of brackets, and I need to square both of them separately. So starting with 2 root 7, what do I get when I square this? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. And when I square a square root, I go back to the original number of 7. So I get 4 times 7 which is 28. The other term I'm squaring is the one. That's a very simple one. One squared is just one times one or one. 
So I get 28 and 1 when I square my two terms, and then it's always a subtraction symbol between them. So now we move on to the next step. Our numerator is 6 root 7 plus 3, and our denominator is 28 minus 1, or 27. Remembering that we need to simplify our expression. Can I simplify this expression? Well, you'll notice when you look at the whole numbers, the 6, the 3, and the 27, they're all divisible by 3. So I'm going to divide my denominator by 3, as well as my numerator by 3. Now we have to be careful when we do this. The denominator is quite simple. 27 divided 3 is 9, so our denominator is now 9. When we look at the numerator, we're dividing the whole expression by 3, which means we have to divide both terms by 3. 6 divided 3 is 2, so we're going to have 2 root 7 for our first term, and 3 divided 3 is 1, so we're going to have plus 1 for our second term. Anyway, let's now move on to questions C and D. Once again, we're looking to rationalize the denominator. So looking at question C, we have two terms that are added together. We need to multiply this by the same two terms, 2 root 5 and root 3, except this time we're subtracting them. The numerator also needs to be multiplied by the same expression, 2 root 5 minus root 3. So let's start with our numerator. We need to expand our brackets. We start by multiplying root 5 by 2 root 5. We've only got the one whole number, which is 2. And then we multiply our thirds. Root 5 times root 5 is the square root of 25, because 5 times 5 is 25. Let's now multiply the square root of 5 by the square root of 3. 5 times 3 is 15, so we get minus the square root of 15. Let's now focus on the denominator. We've got two terms, 2 root 5 and root 3. It's the same two terms in each set of brackets. What we're going to do is we're going to square each term. So we'll start by squaring 2 root 5. What do we get when we square this? Well, when we square the 2, 2 times 2 is 4. And then when we square the square root of 5, we go back to the original 5. Squaring undoes the square root. So we get 4 times 5, which is 20. The other term we need to square is the square root of 3. So if we square the square root of 3, we're actually going to get 3 because squaring undoes the square root. We now have 20 and 3. So we write those down, 20 and 3, and we simply subtract them. So our numerator is 2 root 25 minus the square root of 15. And then 20 minus 3 is 17. Is there any simplifying that we can do here? Well, the square root of 25 is just 5. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 times 5 minus the square root of 15 over 17, and 2 times 5 is 10. So we get 10 minus the square root of 15 over 17. All right, let's now move on to question D. Focusing on our denominator, which is 4 minus root 15, we multiply by 4 plus root 15. We multiply the numerator by the exact same expression, 4 plus root 15. You might notice this time that our numerator has two terms, so we actually need to put these in brackets. So we'll start by expanding our numerator here, and we actually need to use the FOIL method. FOIL standing for first, outer, inner, and last. So what's the first term in each set of brackets here? It's the 3 root 3 and the 4. What do I get when I multiply these terms? Well, 3 times 4 is 12, and then I have the square root of 3 next to that. So I get 12 root 3. Moving on to step 2, which is the outer terms. That's the 3 root 3 and the root 15. 
So we multiply our thirds. 3 times 15 is 45. So I get the square root of 45. And I also had the whole number of 3. So I get 3 root 45. We need to add this. Moving on to the third step, the inner terms. We have root 5 times 4. That's just going to give us 4 root 5, or plus 4 root 5. Moving on to the last term in each set of brackets, that's the root 5 and the root 15. 5 times 15 is 75, so we're going to get plus root 75. All right, moving on to our denominator now. We have two terms. We have the 4 and the root 15. It's the same two terms for each set of brackets. So we're going to square these separately. We'll start with the 4. If I square 4, it's 4 times 4, or 16. And then I'm going to take the root 15. If I square the square root of 15, the squaring undoes the square root, so I get just 15. So those are my two numbers there. 16 and 15, I'm going to subtract them. 16 minus 15. All right, now the beauty of this question is that the denominator is going to become 1. 16 minus 15 is 1. Now, what happens when the denominator is 1? Well, I'll give you a real simple example. If I have 5 over 1, that's the same as 5. You don't have to write down denominators when they are 1. So we can now simplify our expression by just writing the numerator down with no denominator. Can we simplify this expression? Well, we can if we collect like terms. Now, at the moment, there are no like terms, but we can make some changes so that we do get some like terms. Let's start by focusing on 3 root 45. I'm going to write this in red. 3 root 45. Now, I know that 9 times 5 is 45. So I can rewrite this as 3 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. I can do that because the square root of 9 times the square root of 5 is just the square root of 45. Now the square root of 9 is just 3, so I can now rewrite this as 3 times 3 times the square root of 5, and 3 times 3 is 9, so we get 9 root 5. I would also like to focus on the square root of 75. What can we do to change that one? The square root of 75. Well, I can rewrite this as the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. I can do that because 25 times 3 is 75. Now, I'm just going to give myself a little bit more room here. Now, the square root of 25 is just 5, so I can now rewrite this as 5 root 3. Now, this working out in red would have been better further down here. 3 root 45 is the same as 9 root 5. So I'm going to change that to 9 root 5. The 12 root 3 will remain the same, and the 4 root 5 will remain the same. The square root of 75 is the same as 5 root 3, so I'm going to rewrite the square root of 75 as 5 root 3. I can now collect like terms. 12 root 3 plus 5 root 3 is 17 root 3. 9 root 5 plus 4 root 5 is simply 13 root 5. We have now completed example 2. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.